Fire, a complicated force, intimately tied to the human experience. From the simple joy of roasting a marshmallow on a campfire, to the devastation caused by raging wildfires, there are many ways in which fire touches our lives. The park's use of prescribed fire helps prevent wildfire, protecting those who live on our borders. It also helps shape the experience visitors have in the park. They might see wildlife along a trail or open landscapes alive with colorful wildflowers. Many of these native plants and animals rely on prescribed fire for their very survival. Fire, when applied at the right frequency and intensity, provides a greater diversity within the plant community. And there are a lot of fire dependent species that need that. And some of them include the Florida scrub jay, the gopher tortoise, four petal pawpaw, and the red cockaded woodpecker. One of these species, the Florida scrub jay, is endemic to Florida and listed by the state as threatened. Scrub jays love recently burned areas. Uh, they love to forage on the open ground like we see behind me and they will nest in areas somewhere between waist and shoulder height uh, in these open areas so that they can see the predator that snake or raccoon or whatever it is coming up to their nest uh, uh, and then they mob that predator and prevent it from eating the, either the nestlings or the eggs. Another threatened species, the gopher tortoise, depends upon fire for its habitat. Fire is good for gopher tortoises, like the one that you see behind me, the burrow, uh, because fire promotes the, gr the grasses in the pine flatwoods, and they really especially love the fresh green growth that you see coming up after this prescribed burn that we did a few weeks ago. Wiregrass is itself an important species that benefits from fire. The only way that wiregrass, you can see some seed heads right here. See how that comes off? The only reason uh, this stuff is in seed is about six months ago in March of this year, we burned and that stimulate the end of the end of March we burned and that stimulates this grass to go into bloom and creates this really majestic landscape that you see behind me. While wire grass is prolific in the park, there are many rare plants in the park that also need fire to thrive. One example is the endangered four petal pawpaw. Without fire, the plants stop producing fruit and we don't get regeneration in our scrub. Many of the scrub uh, areas that have not been burned, the populations have crashed and there's only several of the plants that were initially there and no recruitment. Clearly, fire plays an important role in the survival of our native plants. Some, like the sand pine, are even dependent on fire to release their seeds. So just how did these species come to rely upon fire in the first place? For thousands of years before development, Florida experienced fires. Sparked by the frequent intense lightning that accompanies summer storms, these natural fires cleared accumulated fuels in the understory and promoted new growth. But when development began in the state, this natural process was halted through fire suppression efforts aimed at reducing risk to life and property. Wildfires became increasingly difficult to control due to increased underbrush, and wildlife suffered habitat degradation as natural communities shifted. A main reason why we do prescribe fire in the park is for the plants and the animals, but a huge benefit to the community around the park where we're doing prescribed fire is that they are protected from that catastrophic wildfire. With so much urban development surrounding Jonathan Dickinson, how well the park manages its wildfire risk affects the whole community. Local residents and visitors are always top of mind when planning a prescribed fire. The primary thing that we are looking at when we're burning is where is our smoke going? So in this setting here, uh, we are, we've got a road behind us. There's some homes. There's actually a hospital uh, in the area. So the biggest thing that we're looking at is where is our smoke going? Another big thing with urban interface versus a 
burn that we're doing in the middle of the park where there's nobody around is communication, letting folks know that we're burning, letting the neighbors behind us know so that when they see that smoke column, uh, that they are aware of what's going on. And then also, it's a, it can be a real simple thing, is we let the neighborhood know uh, in the wintertime, everybody's got their windows open. They know to close those windows, the smoke doesn't sit in their house. The first step in any prescribed fire is the writing of the prescription. A licensed burn boss will write a plan that includes weather and smoke predictions, fuel and land type, acreage, and many other components. This plan will be submitted to the Florida Forest Service for authorization. One thing that I always try to get through to folks when talking about prescribed fire is that it is the responsible choice, the responsible action to the community, whether it's the natural community and the resources that we're trying to manage for, or whether it's the surrounding com community around the park, um, putting, uh, putting that, that smoke uh, away from that neighborhood or picking that day where it's a little windier where the smoke is not going to settle at night on US-1 or some other road. After planning, preparation begins. In order to manage fuel conditions and ensure adequate fire breaks, the crew will prepare the burn zone using a variety of equipment. And it doesn't end there. We work together in maintaining our equipment, um, working together to prep these different um, zones, getting them ready for the next fire, or just um, fire suppression in general, just so that if anything does occur, everything's always ready for that next fire. A lot of what goes into it too is the maintenance of our equipment, um, mainly water pumps and the trucks. We'll also prep around structures such as buildings, benches, signs, just to reduce the fuel around it so fire doesn't creep up to it or put too much heat on it. The day of the scheduled burn, the crew will meet for a briefing during which the burn boss will review the objectives, strategies, and safety considerations for the day. After conducting a test fire to ensure that fire on the ground is behaving as expected, crews will begin to execute the plan laid out in the prescription. First, crew members will ignite a backing fire along an established fire line, working against the direction of the wind. Other crew members will ignite the sides and interior of the burn unit, creating an area free of burnable materials. The final stage of ignition occurs when crew ignite the remaining side of the unit, burning into the direction of the wind, and into the established black area. Protection of structures along the fire line and within the unit is important throughout the burn. Once specifications of the prescription are met, the crew will begin mop up along the edges of the unit, ensuring the fire cannot escape. The result of these efforts is a fresh beginning for the plants and animals that call the area home. Within days of burning, the first signs of regeneration appear. A couple weeks after a burn, all that new vegetation, that new, uh, particularly grass growth, uh, comes right back. Uh, that vegetation is very nutritious for the gopher tortoises, for the deer, uh, any, anything that eats, eats that new growth. So people often worry about the wildlife. What do they do when we, we do a prescribed burn? Are they okay? And I can tell you that, that they seem to enjoy, especially the after effects of a prescribed burn. Deer will come in literally right after we're done in the evening and start licking ash. Hawks will be monitoring for uh, rodents. Uh, you'll see even while we're burning, small birds that prey on insects attacking, you know, insects as they're leaving the fire itself. Visitors also enjoy benefits as a result of prescribed fire, which stimulates wildflowers that create bursts of color throughout the landscape. As I'm hiking through the park on the Florida Trail that runs through it or the other trails in the park, it's amazing the difference that I can see within areas where prescribed fire has been used. Uh, the fire controls the undergrowth, opens up areas that would normally be congested with plants, uh, allows the grasses, the flowers. It's amazing how quickly things start to come back to provide food and habitat for the animals in the area. Using prescribed fire to improve habitat quality for the wildlife in the park means more encounters for visitors. 
when you ride through those different natural communities, you get to see a whole different set of wildlife. I've seen gopher tortoises, scrub jays. I saw a quail today, and you don't see quail very often. Because visitors are often curious about how fire brings about these changes that they see, the community is invited every October to the park's largest annual event, Firefest. I've been coming to Firefest for longer than I actually remember because I've been here since coming to Firefest since I was like seven months old. This event connects the community to Jonathan Dickinson's prescribed fire program while offering fun and educational activities, including a hands-on fire hose experience, a helicopter water drop demonstration, vendors and exhibitors from agencies and organizations in our community, a spooky trail, swamp buggy and hay rides, and two prescribed fire demonstrations where visitors can see up close the techniques and safety measures employed by park staff on the fire line. Although prescribed fires are most often conducted during the day, Firefest allows visitors to witness a rare and visually stunning night burn. You get the opportunity to see fire used as a tool, but it's a really spectacular sight. The many exciting and unique elements of Firefest make it an absolute can't miss event. Whatever it is that brings you here, your support matters. Your choice to visit the park, volunteer, join the Friends Organization, or encourage others to visit contributes to our ability to preserve and protect this land. So next time you smell smoke or see a plume above Jonathan Dickinson, think of all the wildlife that will have open, safe spaces to roam. Think of the new life that will soon emerge. Think of the wildflowers that will line the trail on your next hike. <laughs>